Hey there, fellow maker. Welcome to the shop. We have a special video for you because of the weather in Seattle and then I got the flu. Uh, we didn't do a build video this week, but we gathered your questions and we're doing a Q&A or an AMA or an ABA, Ask Bill Anything. Uh, we already have our questions all lined up. Don't worry if you missed this round, we'll be sure to do this again and get more questions from you later. But for now, why don't we just dive right into your questions and I'll answer them. As expected, we got a lot of questions about our kitty cats. We have two cats. They're siblings, a male and a female. There's Ender, but you might know him as Buddha Cat. And there's Willow, the uh, less camera friendly cat. They, we got them in 2010, so they're almost 10 years old now. And yes, if you see a uh, Punish Props prop in the wild, take a closer look for the cat hair. My goal someday is for one of my props to end up on the show Pawn Stars and they authenticate it by finding the cat hairs. Vistable here and several other people had questions about some of the projects that we've started but haven't finished yet. I have all kinds of projects that I've started but haven't finished yet. I do have plans to finish all of them, of course, but only time will tell. Will Milan here wants to know what a good first foam smithing project would be. That's a fantastic question. We have many projects for you to choose from with a variety of skill levels, but if you're looking for a good beginner project, this one right here, the Destiny Hunter Knife build, all EVA foam. We have a video on this build, free blueprints, you can get started today. I made this out of scrap foam that I had laying around. If you've already done this one, head on over to our free blueprint page. You can see a whole bunch of other projects there with free templates and their corresponding videos to help you get started. Our pal Bobby wants to know a little bit more about the other creators that inspire us. We follow and watch a lot of other YouTube creators. So we have our buddies, uh, Bob, Jimmy, and David. All of their channels are amazing, but they also do a wonderful podcast called Making It. Highly recommended. Some of my favorite videos on YouTube right now are coming from this old Tony. I absolutely love his videos. They're on machining, and his brand of humor lands with me perfectly. Of course, our friend Jazza, we've done some collaborations with him. If you're into illustration, his channel is a must. Adam Savage and the whole Tested crew are incredible and the videos that they get to make are just wonderful. You've seen me appear with my friends, the Modern Rogue channel. Those guys are hilarious. It's really fun to shoot with them. And I think they're making some of the most unique content on YouTube. Clickspring is just a wizard, another machiney channel, but his, his videography is just ugh, so good. And who doesn't love that amazing Australian accent? Destin over at Smarter Every Day is making some of the most compelling content on the internet right now. Thumbs up for Laminar Flow. I adore the slow-mo guys. They're doing a really cool global tour series of videos right now that are super fun. And I never miss one of Captain Disillusion's videos. He puts a crazy amount of effort into his videos and he just did a video on Laminar Flow. So, highly recommended. Dennis is curious about what we did for a living way before Punished Props Academy. Before prop making, back in the dark ages, I worked at Microsoft. I did video publishing uh, for the Zune video marketplace. Brittany worked there with me for a while, but she had a brief foray into video game development. So she worked at several different video game companies. And then she quit four years ago and, and joined the team full time. So that's our past. We got a lot of really good questions about our business, specifically how we make money and how we make the whole thing work. Our business model has changed a ton over the years. When I got started back in the early 2010s, I would get commission work over the internet. People would pay me to make a prop for them and then I would mail it to them. Nowadays, we hardly do any commission work, only really in special cases. Our output now is content. The videos that we make, the books that we write, and our website. And we make our money using that content in a variety of different ways. And I'd like to dive into uh, the YouTube game just a tiny bit because I know a lot of people figure you make a, a YouTube video, it gets a ton of views, you make some money and you've got a business model, but it doesn't work that easily. See, we've been doing this a long time and some of our videos do get quite a lot of views and the ad revenue from that every month is, it, it goes all over the place, but for us it averages maybe like $2,000 a month, which on the surface sounds great, but that doesn't 
doesn't even pay for the rent for this place. Not even counting the rent for where I live or the insurance money we have to pay and a whole bunch of other expenses for running a business. So how do we make money if YouTube doesn't pay us enough with ad revenue? Well, we have a bunch of other fun ways to do it. We have our patrons. Patreon has been fantastic and much more consistent than YouTube ad revenue. We also have the store on our website, so I sell books and files, merchandise, like, oh look, I have a Punish Props Academy shirt. All sorts of stuff over there, that helps a lot. We also have affiliate deals with Amazon and some other companies for the products that we use. Plus, we sell our books on Amazon. The answer is really a, a whole bunch of different sources for income. That way, if one of them isn't as productive one month as uh, it used to be, like the ad revenue goes up and down a lot, hopefully the other sources of income make up for that difference. Now, if you wanna try and do something like this for a living, I just want you to have a realistic expectation of what that might look like. It's gonna take a lot of time to get some traction. It took us years. Also, remember that just cause you enjoy making stuff doesn't necessarily mean you will enjoy making stuff for a living. For most people, doing it as a hobby is really the best way to get into it. We have a whole section on our website that covers a ton more about the business side of what we do. We're open books about the whole thing. So if you wanna learn more, head on over there, check it out. Leo and a bunch of our other friends wanted to know more about our backstory and how we got into prop and costume making. We started cosplaying 10 years ago, if you can believe it. That's what got us into this whole thing. Started cosplaying, we enjoyed it, we kept cosplaying, and then eventually people started hiring me to make props and costumes for them. And that whole thing happened over the last 10 years and now we're here and everything is crazy. We did, uh, I think one or two videos on our podcast, maybe, I don't know, we'll find them in link below. The whole story laid out for you to enjoy. Born Again Maker wants to know how he can show his appreciation of us more. Isn't that nice? The number one way I know I'm doing a good job is when you share photos, work in progress photos, or finished photos of your props and costumes with me. So on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, seeing what you've been able to make when you learn something from our channel, that fuels me, that lets me know that I'm on the right path, I'm doing the right thing. If we go to a convention, like we're at Dragon Con, if I can see a costume in person and we can have a conversation about how you made it, that's just my favorite thing ever. I love it so much, I love seeing photos of your work. Please continue to share. I'm uh, at Chimbeard on Twitter. Don't feel bad about just sending me really cool photos. I wanna see them all. Please share, thank you. We had a couple folks who wanted to know a little more about dealing with failure. So here's the thing about failure. It's gonna happen during the entire creative process, but it's not the end all be all fails that you see on uh, Friday when Fail Army posts their videos. No, these are just tiny little steps backward in the creative process. It's gonna happen with every single project and that's okay because you learn from every single one of them. The other thing is as you work through your project, you're gonna have these tiny fails, right? But you're also gonna have these tiny wins. And hopefully, by the end of the project, you have slightly more wins than fails. And you can be happy with the output. And if you're not, the good news is you can start another project tomorrow. And that's exactly what it's like when I'm building. There's little road bumps the whole way. You see them in all our videos whenever I goof up, and that's totally fine. I always learn from them and apply that to the next project. A couple of you wanted to know more about the work I've been doing with Adam Savage and Tested. I've been a fan and a community member of the Tested Gang since way back when they got started, when Will and Norm launched the thing. So I was always active in the community. And when they did uh, like charity live streams and stuff, I, I would donate uh, props so that they could contribute that to the pool. And just over time, I kind of became casual buddies with those guys. And we met up at Comic-Con, became friends. And then eventually over like five or six years, just started picking up projects uh, with those guys. Nowadays, they fly me down uh, every month or so to film videos for their channel, their tested premium channel, uh, which is where most of those videos go, and some of the stuff they do on YouTube, which has been amazing. I love working with that crew. It's really great to see what a small crew can do uh, behind the scenes, how much they can accomplish, and everyone on the team is wonderful. I love when I get the chance to work with Adam. He's one of the most inspiring people to be around. He's just pure energy from the moment you see him to the moment uh, one of you gives up and leaves the room. It's just kind of bonkers that I can give him a holler if I need to know something because he knows a lot. 
Very smart guy, very compassionate man. Definitely attracts a very compelling type of person. And that's what's built, tested. A very compassionate, compelling, hardworking group of people. And I'm absolutely honored that I get to play a part in any small bit of that. It's great, I love those guys. Mitchell wants to get into 3D modeling and is looking for some advice. There has never been a better time to start learning how to do some basic 3D modeling. We have 3D printers coming down in price like crazy, so you can 3D model something and then print it the same day. It really makes you feel like Tony Stark. Lately, I've been enjoying using Fusion 360. It's free if you're a hobbyist or a student or a startup like we are. There's tons of wonderful free tutorials out there to get you started. Fusion 360 has their own tutorials, we'll link to those, but there's also some other channels that focus on using that product. We have a couple of specific videos, even some longer form 3D modeling videos that we'll link to, like the Oblivion Pistol and the Thirst Zapper. Wonderful resources for free, you can go get the software and the learning for nothing which is a lot less than I paid for my college education. Whichever software you pick, there's free resources out there to learn. I recommend you pick a project, dive right in, and uh, fail a whole bunch, but learn a lot too. Some of you were curious about which of the projects we finished are our favorites. Picking a favorite project is like picking a favorite child. I've made so many and I love them all. I couldn't possibly pick just that one. That's my favorite. I love it so much. Wastelander is curious, of all the parts of the fabrication process, which is my favorite? I think my absolute favorite part about making props has to be talking about making props with other people who make props. Uh, and weathering, I like that part a lot too. Dipped to Pid wants to know why we haven't seen Brittany in front of the camera as much as we used to. You haven't seen Brittany in front of the camera in a while because she's spending all of her time behind the camera. We've really enjoyed how our videos look when the camera is off a tripod and moving around a little bit. It breathes better. We have this really fun back and forth. To do that, we have to have a camera person and Brittany is killing it. She's also, by the way, been editing all of our videos and doing a killer job. <laughs> <laughs> Noah wants to know more about our video production process and schedule. We produce our videos in a weekly fashion, so every Monday we have a new video going up, which means we have to film the entire video in just one week. Sometimes that means we're able to film a video in just one day and get the whole project done and then spend a couple days editing it. Sometimes that means we spend four or five days working on the build and then we spend another couple days on the edit. It varies depending on which project it is and sometimes that means we have to cut videos up into different pieces so that we can get one out every week. Uh, that happened with our Borderlands gun. It ended up being three videos that we produced over three weeks. On the other hand, we did our Ghostbuster trap build in just two days, and then we spent another couple days working on the edit. Fieldwalker Masks is curious about my humble beginnings. The first prop I ever made was a lightsaber handle, and I must have been 15 at the time. Basically, it was this. It was a bunch of washers that my dad had, some wooden dowel that I put all of the washers onto, and uh, a PVC pipe, and then a lot of super glue. It fell apart almost instantly, as far as I can remember, and my dad wasn't really happy about me super gluing all of his washers together. But think about the net benefit. Now I can think about that memory fondly. We can all have a good chuckle about it. <laughs> I wish I still had that thing. I don't know if I have any photos of it. I'll have to ask my mom if I can find some and maybe I'll share that on, on Instagram at some point. But yeah, humble beginnings. I just glued a bunch of washers together and uh, I've caught the bug ever since. I've been a maker my entire life. And finally, George wants to know if there are any smaller YouTube channels that I recommend other makers go check out. There are so many amazing up and coming YouTube channels that deserve a lot more attention. Like our friend Zombie, she's incredible. She's been making YouTube videos longer than I have and her channel is growing. But if you haven't seen it already, do yourself a favor and go subscribe. I also very much enjoy the creativity and humor over at Friggin' Boom Toys. He does some really bonkers stuff with a very low budget and I just find his videos very enjoyable. 
A recent favorite is the craftsman, Steady Crafton. Not cosplay necessarily, but he does maker videos. They're really charming and super fun to watch. Some of our other cosplay buddies have started cranking out the videos. Core Geek just did a series on airbrushes. It's really useful information, highly recommended, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he makes next. Plus our buddy Steve over at SKS Props has been killing it with the video tutorials. He's working on some really great stuff right now. Definitely worth a subscription. We're also seeing more wonderful tutorials from channels like Hendo Art. She used to do stuff with the DIY prop shop and now she's making videos on her own. Some really great tutorials there. And another recent find is the Smuggler's Room. Not only does he do prop and costume stuff, but he also made his basement into a spaceship set and I think that's incredible. We'll have links to all of these channels down in the description so that you can go check them out as soon as you're done watching me talk at your face. I love seeing how many people are starting to make their own content on YouTube. In fact, if you have a favorite channel that not a lot of people have seen yet, please link it down below. Maybe we can get those channels some love. And personally, I just want to see more amazing content. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for sending your questions. They were really, really wonderful. This was a great thing to do on a kind of a shorter week for us here. I'm on the mend, feeling a lot better. I am ready to build more stuff. So next week is going to be a build. I hope you're very excited to follow along because I'm super stoked to film it and share it with you. As always, thank you so much to all of our patrons who directly support what we do here in the shop with their dollar dollar bills. If you want to help out and get access to some super fun stuff like behind the scenes vlogs, early access to all of our build videos and extra credit videos for all of our build videos, you can head to patreon.com slash punish props. Consider tossing this a dollar. It helps us a lot. Thank you again so much. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next build.